Hi, welcome. Um, this video I'm going to look at um, where things go wrong on this little setup we've got here. Basically we've got our Scarab Armored Gimbal Black and our Parasirius SPG Gimbal Controller. Um, and we've set it up now. I've covered how to do the video and some tuning stuff in other videos, how to build it and stuff. But I just want to go over what 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 to do when things go wrong, okay? Because it is actually there are four things I've worked out. Four things I've worked out that um, will um, mess you up with this gimbal. I've had a couple of play with it for a few days. I've shot a bit of video with it. Um, I've deliberately made it go wrong. Uh, I've then fixed it. Um, and I've had other things go wrong and fixed it. Um, but uh, basically I've identified four things that are going to mess you up with the gimbal itself. And then there's a fifth way to get bad video, which should be very obvious to all of you by now, but I'll cover that last. All right. So um, it's pretty simple to fault find this because if you buy it as a package, there's one thing you know and one thing taken as a given that you should keep in mind if things go aren't working properly with this gimbal. And that is the controller is set. The second you grab one of these, the USB cable, and you plug it into this, you are gonna mess yourself up. Don't grab a USB cable. Don't mess with the settings. The settings in the controller are perfect for this gimbal. You can't make them better. Okay? So do not tweak these settings. One more time. Do not tweak the settings in this. Do not plug the USB lead in if you have a problem. This thing is fine. Don't touch it. Unless, of course, there is a fault, but it's highly unlikely knowing Quinton and multi-way copter. Okay? So don't touch it. This is a given. And that's a good thing, because if the controller is perfect, if you know the settings in it are perfect, then it must be something in the gimbal that is giving you bad results. Okay? So that's good. It's one less headache. It's one more headache if you buy someone else's gimbal and someone else's controller. Yes, you have to start with the software. But actually, having messed with this, I'd say the software is the last thing you need to do. The four things I'm about to go through are really critical, really important, and they are what will mess you up. Okay? One of them is unique to this particular gimbal. I'll go over why late in a minute. But... That's taken half the headache away from you. Okay, so number one, the sensor. It needs to be firmly attached and perfectly square on the case. I covered in previous videos how you can use my, I should patent it, um, Lego jig to perfectly position the sensor. Doesn't matter if it's a mil or two off, but it has to be absolutely square. And luckily, it's a bit hard to see, but when it's in the right spot and, in, and the camera's in the case, you actually have a nice line down that battery hatch. And you've got these lines and another line there on the camera and the case that you can actually just spot and check that that is square. So getting that sensor square is the first thing you have to get right. If you get that wrong, nothing's gonna work. The second thing, number two, is you have to have everything balanced. And this is something you'll probably have to tweak occasionally. I found, I thought I had it balanced, and I found, no, it was out a little bit here, it was out a little bit there, and it all affects each other. So basically, what you should, if it's balanced, and the wiring will mess you up, you should be able to move the gimbal to, that's the wiring messing me up, any location and have it just sit there. Okay? Firstly on the front motor, and then with 
the back motor. You should be able to move it to any position and have it just sit there. That shows that it's balanced. Now, the, if you don't have it right, it's not going to work well. It's going to shake. It's going to give you bad video. It's going to be constantly chattering. The motors are going to just be constantly chattering, fighting the imbalance. So I found uh, I had it right when I did the first build. Uh, I thought I had it right. Changed a couple of things. Had to redo it again. And I've been flying it and it's been in and out of the car and stuff like that. And I found before I shot this video today that the camera angle here had changed slightly. So I just had to give the, cam this, the, the angle here on the camera a slight tweak to get it back to balance again. So it's something you need to keep an eye on and check every now and then. You know, it's not hard. You come back from a day's flying, sit on the bench and just make sure it's all, honk all good to go for next time. All right, really important. Now, up to number three, the third way thing that will mess you up with this gimbal, and that is the wiring itself. Okay, so what I have done with the sensor wiring, okay, I've taken it through this back hole in the bottom of the side plate, then tucked it through the long tube to bring it out next to the roll motor. Okay, and then a nice big loop up to the controller. Now what we've got is nice big loops. You can see how I've got this lovely loop of cable. So if I move it beyond upright, I'm not pulling on it. Moving it beyond down, I'm not pulling on it. It's not snagging and it's not catching there. Okay, likewise, roll it that way, doesn't catch on anything. Roll it this way, doesn't catch on anything. All right. The other thing I found was that, uh, now, with the front motor, I brought the cable through this slot, and again, I've taken it down through the tube, and I brought it out sort of around the bottom, and what I found was it was actually causing some drag on the motor. So the simple solution I came up to on this particular occasion, and not all gimbals are going to go together the same, it was a tiny bit of sticky tape here just to hold like a bend in the wire and have it exiting back along the tube rather than straight out against the motor, just freed it up with the right kind of loop sitting here. Now I haven't bundled that wire or anything, I've just poked it inside loosely. So I can very easily um, pull on the wire if I have to. All right, so that's giving me nice freedom of movement and the wire isn't messing with me. If I'm looking at infinitesimal bits of balance, yes, the wire messes with me. But as far as the range of motion goes, the wire is not getting in my way. Okay, really important. Okay, now that brings me to number four, and it messed me up. I thought I had this thing perfect, and then I got it in the air, and I found I had all sorts of issues with it. And it really seems crazy, but the headbands on the eight ball are critical. If these are too loose, Right? This gimbal is unique in that if you look at all the other gimbals on the market, the eight balls are back up here. They're on the airframe. They're what all the motors bolt to. So the motors and all the mo vibes and everything from the motors, right, can be transferred to the camera. They are not isolated from the camera, but they're isolated, and more importantly, the sensor is isolated from the airframe by those eight balls. On this, the sense, the motors have to work through the eight ball to the sensor. So, so basically, if you get any jiggle in the eight ball, the sensor is going to send wrong data back to the controller, and the motors are going to try and fight the jiggle. In either, I had to use stiffer tape on the sensor, which I mentioned before, but. The motors are going to fight the jiggle in the eight ball because you're going to have just that little wobble and it's just it, what happens is it starts to oscillate what i would could do was basically i could just do that with the airframe and the motor would just start shaking and it would sit there oscillating and doing this and what it was was too much play in the eight ball because the motor had moved the camera the eight ball would have a bit of lag in it 
and the sensor would pick that up and try and overcorrect itself. So it was generating this mechanical little false feedback loop, okay, which was causing all sorts of jiggles and nastiness. So uh, I've played around with it and I've come up with four headbands. Each one is doubled up and has its own axis across the, the, the eight ball, right? But four hair bands gets it compressed enough that we don't have the oscillation issue anymore. Okay, three head bands, still oscillated. Five head bands, doesn't make any better. Six actually started making it worse. I think basically the sixth head band started playing with my balance. So four hair bands is the magic number for me. Your number may vary, but you buy them. I've, I just went out to the local supermarket, bought a packet of 20 for $3. Worthwhile investment because I suspect these things are going to go slack over time. They are going to wear, they're going to degrade. Um, rubber does that, elastic does that. That's why we keep having to buy jocks, let's face it. So, um, so uh, you know, buy yourself a packet, go out, make the investment, and keep them, keep them handy. Uh, and every now and then you might want to just make sure that everything's in tension and okay and you're not getting too much vibe through the thing. I'd, you know, I'd be regularly looking at replacing the eight ball. So they're basically the four things that are going to mess you up as far as this gimbal goes. Okay, so sensor not being squared, things not in balance, check it regularly, make sure everything is balanced and it sits where it should. Okay, the wire routing will mess you up. Just make sure everything can move freely Okay, and finally the headbands, getting the right number of headbands and the right amount of tension. You don't want to over tension this or you start getting jello. Okay, which brings me to number five, which I haven't, which isn't official, but my first video off this, I've got to say, was a bit disappointing. I wasn't happy with it at all. I didn't think it'd be very good. I thought it would be better. And my first video flying this wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. And sure enough, I came back to the workshop, got it on the bench, and I had a noisy bearing in one motor. So I replaced that bearing. Everything seemed smooth. Took it out for another fly. Still not quite right. One of the mo another motor was out of balance. So check all your motor bearings. Check your motor balancing. Check your prop balances. Check your collets are square. Your airframe has to, you, you think that you might think buying this gimbal is going to be the way to give you perfect, locked in, wonderful imaging. Because the gimbal is so good, everything else on the airframe becomes even more critical. So redo your motor balances, redo your prop balances. Make sure everything is running smooth, make sure everything is balanced, correct and then you're gonna start getting really good video out of this gimbal, all right? I've no doubt you guys are gonna find more and more ways to screw this thing up, in which case I'll come back and do more videos on the fixes as you guys discover even better ways to mess with this. I'm sure somebody's gonna one day get this off square, that line there which I mentioned during the build video, and that's gonna mess them up. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to think of something else. I don't know. I can't think of anything else that's going to mess this up, in which case I'll come back. I'll do some more videos later on better ways to fine tune it. But for now, they're the four magic things you need to test. Bye for now.